Thanksgiving. Yeah, come over here, Ben, and show its head. Hey, little buddy. He acts fine. It's just upside down head. No balance. Not enough balance to stand. I mean, he can still use his leg, but I mean, he just doesn't. Pull this up. Oh, oh, here we go. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. Don't don't stress yourself. focus. There you go. See, he's still looking around and stuff. And he's quite lucid. Lucid. Aware of his surroundings. Oh. Oh, goodness. Oh, it's okay. You're all right. Feed him some corn. Later on, I'll feed him some peas because I don't really think corn is all that nutritious. That's yeah, really not. They don't process it any more than we do. Well, I got both corn and peas, so I mean... No, don't be stubborn with me on this. You need Gotta to eat. eat. You need to eat. Come, come here. I know it sucks to have to be force-fed, but... There you go. There, yeah. See, that wasn't so bad. He's just kind of looking like, I don't know. <laughs> but if it is true that... Because um, somebody said that once healed, it could reoccur under stress. If it is um, para, para, paramyxovirus. It makes me wonder if it is even worth trying to save him if he's going to keep having this issue. Because if he does keep having this issue, that means he's going to have to be cared for for life. Right. Like, like, uh, like, for example, say you have, like, a grandparent that, um, is bedridden. Essentially a living potato, living vegetable. You know, you're always going to have to care for them because they can't do it for themselves. And it just makes you wonder what kind of quality of life is that. Right. So. Now, I mean, I know I've read quite a bit about the paramyxovirus, but um, I did not read anywhere where it said it could reoccur. I'm hoping that ain't true, but a person that, uh, oh, heavens. A person that said it seemed, uh, pretty knowledgeable on it, so. It's okay, buddy. Uh, we'll just have to see what kind of help we can get. Let's see, look at him turning that head. He can't get it straight. Uh, pretty sure it's a neurological thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, how's that spot on his head? Is it cleaned up? Or he had the worm stuck to his head? Yeah. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Okay. Well, that, uh... That clears up the theory of head wound. No, he doesn't have any kind of visible wounds or anything. I mean, even with the worm on him, I checked under the feathers near the skin. Right, I mean, even if it had been just a bonk, their little skulls are so del delicate. I mean, they could get concussions and stuff. Mom said that, uh... <laughs> she thought it got hit by a car and got a concussion. I'm pretty sure if it got hit by a car, it wouldn't still be alive. Uh, no, there wouldn't be much left of it. No. Let's see, got hit some head spinning action there. Now, are you more comfortable sitting on your front? Come here, just don't go flapping, okay? I don't need you getting your feathers all over the place. That will be bad. Oh, you're being stubborn again.
There you go. I know it's stressful, little fella, but it's gonna be worse if you don't eat. Yeah. It's like, like I was saying, if you just sat it outside, it would die. I mean, a bird that uh, is in this kind of a condition ain't gonna <coughs> last long. He seems a bit flighty, not sure about me, which is understandable, but at the same time, he's not going absolute. Right, I mean, he's hesitant about humans, as he has every right to be, but he does seem to be oh, getting the idea that you're trying to care for him. Come on. Okay, you can take it off. 